from coast to coast, live via satellite, it's time to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord comes from major Christian events in America and across the world, covering over 500 million souls with the good news of new life in Jesus Christ. Now from Houston, Texas, we invite you to be a part of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. on Praise the Lord our Pastor of Orlando Christian Center of Orlando, Florida, Benny Hinn, Ministry of Music, Gifted Recording Artists, Dean and Mary Brown, and Steve Brock, and ready to take your calls, some of the most beautiful prayer partners in the world. Now your hosts, President and founders of the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Paul and Jay. Welcome, hello everybody, to beautiful Channel 14, Houston, Texas. Tell me where I am tonight. This is historic. This is beautiful new Channel 14 studios. Our very first time ever to do live Praise the Lord from these new studios. And I wish the cameras had been on a minute before we went on the air that all of you saw here. Amen. Jan and uh, the crew, I mean, you can't believe how pretty this got in the last 30 seconds just before airtime. They're having a CET telethon down here, and we thought, well, we were up in Dallas, Texas, putting the finishing touches on Channel 58 studio up there, so wherever there's lights on and a holy beamer, hey, why not have live praise the Lord? So here we are. We flew an hour down here rather than three hours all the way back to California. So we've just got a lot of good things that we're going to share together tonight, and your beautiful new studio is really taking shape. Thank you. <laughs> are, are you still out of breath? No, I've got my breath. You know, we just had 30 minutes between them doing a live telethon and really just kind of moving the set around. This is the first time I've been here to see it, you know, in really the finished uh, state. So we're just glad to be here. And look at how many partners we have tonight. We love you. Can one of our cameras turn around and can y'all give me a beautiful uh, Houston love wave out there? It's great to be here with y'all. Pull back, Mr. Director. Let me see a nice wide shot there. We've got a wonderful amen corner here tonight. Live wire on fire partners. And can you see all the way back to the back there? Yeah, keep waving at me there. The prayer partners are at their places on the phones and those of you in this greater Houston area. We want you to call and continue right on through the evening. This is the two times of the year that we have the community educational telethon and we're kind of sandwiching ourselves in between uh, two of those sessions tonight and we're just glad to be here to praise the Lord with all of you. Amen? Amen. Dean and Mary Brown are here tonight and before they get underway singing, I want Benny Hinn to come on over here. He's going to open the word a little bit later and just do whatever the Holy Spirit asks him to do. From Orlando, Florida, let's tell <laughs> Pastor Benny Hinn, we love him tonight. Welcome. How you doing, brother? Thank you, Paul. I'm doing great, brother. I tell you, this is marvelous. Marvelous. I tell you what, don't you think Jan looks wonderful? Yeah. I tell you, she, you know what, I was telling her tonight, I said, Jan, I can't believe how nice you look. She looks so young, Paul. <laughs> I'm, they're going to think I'm her father one of these days. If we don't. I mean, if anybody's getting a facelift around here, I am. I mean, you know. how you doing? How's Orlando? Brother, I tell you, I'm doing so great, I can hardly contain it. Tonight, get ready, brother. The devil is not going to like it. Good, good. Can you give us maybe just a little foretaste of what the Holy Spirit's dealing with you about? And, because I, you know, we'll, we'll howdy a little bit later, but I, when Benny comes, I like to turn him loose and just have him open the word and preach, don't you? And pray for the sick or do whatever the Spirit of the Lord tells you to do. What, what, what's the Lord talking to you about tonight? Can I really tell you what the Lord's telling me? 
I had a vision two weeks ago. Can I, can I tell you about it? I, I mean, a real, you, you really saw something in, in the spirit. A real, I, you know, I don't have many visions like this. The last time I had a vision was 15 years ago, maybe 16 years ago. Two weeks ago, I had a vision that absolutely stunned me. It stayed with me for days. And I told some preachers, I even told Shambach about it. Yeah, Brother Shambach. He is, by, by the way, he's wonderful. I, 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 I saw myself in space. I actually, I don't know how to tell you this. Dimash Shakarin talks about being in space and seeing the whole world. Well, is this the rapture? I mean, were we going to heaven? No, 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 no. Uh, the, the first part of the vision dealt with something that I could not understand, where I actually saw a fire. I was standing on a floor, and, and, and a fire was coming out of the cracks. And of course, that part I didn't like too well, but just wait. And out of the flames were little devils trying to pull me down and pull my pastors down with me. But suddenly, I was totally in the spirit. I mean, brother, it was incredible. I was in the spirit, completely in space. Now, don't ask me how, how it happened. It just happened. It was so real to me. And it wasn't something I saw with my eyes. It was, I mean, uh, how shall I say it? It was more than just a physical vision. It was, I was taken into it, you know. I don't know how else to say it. Just sunk into it. I saw myself in space, and suddenly I saw the planet, our planet. I saw the continents. I, thought, I saw everything. Look to my right, and I saw this tidal wave coming towards Earth. Paul gets ready. I'm telling you, brother. A tidal wave. I actually saw a tidal wave in space. And I quickly thought, what is a tidal wave doing up here? Like water? A water tidal wave? A water tidal wave in space. And suddenly it came towards earth and it splashed it, just splashed it. I mean, it just, water was dripping everywhere. I could not understand why I was seeing it till I was back in that same room I was standing in. Still in that vision, I was seeing it. And now I could still see the fires, but suddenly my pastors and myself began rebuking those spirits and out of our mouth gushed a river, an incredible river that just gushed, uh, and, and these, these powers and these devils began to break and vanish, mm -hmm. and, I came, and I came out of it. And the Lord spoke to me and said, He said, that's the coming move of the Spirit. So, the people, are you, are you ready for something now? Are you, I'm ready. Okay, are you ready for something? Now, I'm telling you the gospel truth. About a few days after that, during a service, Again, something happened to me. Live, I was standing up, I was preaching, I was ministering, when suddenly I went completely out. Just, I, I was totally uh, gone. I mean, I was still standing, but I was in church. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not saying I fell down or something. Just, I was completely gone in the spirit. And I heard my ear, I heard my mouth say these, these words, brother. I heard my mouth say, in three and a half months, God will begin moving in America. And suddenly I stopped. Suddenly I stopped and I thought, my God, what, what did I just say? Because that wasn't me. I said, what did I say? And I thought, suddenly in the auditorium sits Jerry B. Walker from here. By the way, he lives there. So my wife says, by the way, there's somebody here from Houston, this pastor from Houston. I said, well, I looked. And I said, that's no pastor. I said, that's Jerry B. Walker. <laughs> so he, he, he comes up and I said, look, what are you doing here, brother Jerry B. and all this? He says, can I tell you something? I said, yes. He says, a lady in California prophesied the same exact thing two weeks ago. I said, who is she? He said, some old lady prophesied who was known to be a prophet or a prophetess. And she said, in four months, she said, you said three and a half, that was two weeks ago. He said, God is still on time, isn't it? <laughs> Brother, I tell you, it happened. Now, now we'll see, all right? Where's... You're talking of that dream or that vision then was a heavenly tidal wave then that's coming from God. And a few days afterwards in prophecy, I heard, I mean, I wasn't planning on saying it, believe me, because I'm not like that, you know. But suddenly this thing came out of my, my, of my God, what did I just say? With 2,000 people listening to this, you know. And I thought, uh oh, I better be right on this one. Then when Jerry B comes up and says, you're right, he says, because a lady just said it two weeks ago. I thought, well, thank God somebody confirmed it. But brother, I tell you, ever since then, a lot has really been happening in, inside of me. And uh, I'll tell you, there's something happening in this world. How about if the Lord wanted to do a little 
pre-tidal wave right here in Houston tonight. Would that be okay with everybody? Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's agree. You have a little scripture you're going to share just before we pray? Oh, it's always in order to read the word. You know, I really would like to say something about Smith Wigglesworth. You know, of course, who, who, he, who he is. He prophesied before his, before his death. Now, this is actually recorded. He prophesied that in the 80s, the greatest move of God would begin in America. Well, goodness, he only has 10 more months before that prophecy is fulfilled. So it must happen, if Smith Wigglesworth was really right, it must happen this year. So I'm ready. How about you? Join hands with somebody, will you? Let's agree. Benny, just lead us in prayer tonight, and let's just invite the precious Holy Spirit to come down here in Houston tonight, host station channel 14, and then radiate out through the Holy Beamer, back to California, back up on the big satellite, out to the whole North American continent, and then by videotape to South Africa. This is going to South Africa. It's going to Europe. It's going to the islands of the sea. Oh, hallelujah. Let's believe God for miracles tonight. Amen? And I got to tell you, the devil has cancer, and he's dying. <laughs> he's dying. The devil is dying. <laughs> He's not well. Lord, we thank you for victory, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we ask that tonight the fires of revival would begin moving in the hearts of your people. Lord, I pray that you'll prepare us for the greatest move of the Holy Ghost since Pentecost. Let the church again see the move of the Holy Ghost as never before. Lord, may we see again the dead raised. May we see again bodies healed by the thousands and the multitudes. May we again see, Lord Jesus, souls saved by the multitudes. May every church in America be packed to capacity with souls. Lord, I pray that they will come very quickly when they'll be knocking on churches' doors to get in. In Jesus' mighty name, let the power of the Lord descend mightily upon us. And Lord, we pray that this very night you'll move mightily. We pray this very night bodies will be healed and lives will be changed families will be put back together and the enemy again will be defeated one more time in jesus name bless paul and jan crutch bless this wonderful station in houston and may this night be a night remembered in the kingdom in jesus name and the people said amen 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 amen, amen. stay right here benny don't leave us uh we're gonna have probably uh, a two-hour program tonight, although if the Holy Spirit wants to move, we'll go three, four, five, six through the night. When God's people own the whole network, hmm, we can do whatever God wants us to do. Amen? And we'll do that. Yes, we will. I might just say quickly before Dean and Mary sing that those of you in the uh, Houston, Harlingen, Beaumont area, just continue your regular calls through this whole praise program as though you were still on with Praiseathon. I'll even mention uh, what's happening here in a few minutes, perhaps, for those of you. This is the semi-annual CET, Community Educational Telethon, in full uh, progress right here. And we're just glad to come in and join you and praise the Lord with you and, and take advantage of this beautiful set. I'll have you show us around here in a little bit, Jan, your beautiful handiwork. All right, Dean and Mary from West Memphis, Arkansas. How's that throat? We've been praying for you, Dean. Thank God. Have you all been praying for Dean? The old devil tried to get his voice, and we just said no in Jesus' name. And he's feeling much, much better tonight, thanks to the Lord. The song simply says, Jesus is Lord over all those devils and demons. Benny, come on, everybody, welcome Dean and Mary as they sing. is 
Dean and Mary Brown. Oh, wow. Are we going to have music tonight? Steve Brock is here. <coughs> My goodness, who isn't here? Roger McDuff is here. Uh, just wonderful, wonderful folks and friends. And others are stopping by through uh, the Houston studios today as they're having their semi-annual praise -a for CET. And so we're just glad to be here tonight, too. And Benny didn't have to fly all the way to California. He only had to oh, fly I to Houston. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> I love this. Yes, indeed. So, how are we yeah. doing? You want to give a little status report real quickly before we uh, sing another song? And you know, on? I just had a little testimony that I wanted to give um, that really kind of relates to Steve Brock, too. Um, I, and can, can you guys hear us? Can you hear us? They can't hear us out there. there can you hear me now? Okay. Um, for the last few months, Few, few weeks, I should say. Um, I've been kind of going through a, a time when depression has tried to hit me again. Have you heard my testimony of being healed of depression 15 years ago? Those of you that go through it, you know that it is, it's just literally hell on earth. I mean, there is no other way in the world to describe depression except just living hell on earth. Your, your spirit becomes all involved with mush and your mind just goes and it's, it's just unreal. It is unreal. You become really a living zombie, just a living zombie. Well, 15 years ago, I went through it for six months and could not on my own come out of it. There was just no way that I could come out. And those of you that have been through it, you know you go through a time where you don't, you, you lose your joy, you lose your laughter. Then comes the time when you lose your tears. And then you don't even want to read the word. You don't, it, it's just a horrible, hideous, living hell. And God healed me of it 15 years ago. But Satan always knows our weaknesses. Yes. And in times of trouble and in times of lies and in times of things like this that come against you, the first thing Satan will do is to try to put depression back on me. That's what he tries to do. Well, for a few, a few days, a few couple of weeks, I really went through a hard, hard time again. And one night, Steve Brock called me, and he just out of the blue said the Lord just had him call me. And he called and prayed for me. And I tell you, in those times, even though you're not praying like you know you should, reading the Word, something that somebody will say will minister to you. So you need to keep your mind open to prayer, and especially to Christian television. But it just, in the afternoons, I would get to where I could get up and be okay and go on about my work, and we have so much to do till the phone would ring, and I'd get busy and go and go and go. But yet, about 6 o'clock in the mornings, that spirit of depression and fear would try to come back on me and begin again. And once you've been through it, you can't go through it again and live. I mean, you just, you don't want to live having to go through it. So morning after morning, as this was coming back on me, I would just lay there and just dread for morning to come and dread for the light to come through our window that it was morning and I was going to have to get up and face another day. And about a week ago or so, I was laying in the bed, and about 6 o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden, that spirit, that feeling, that awful gut adrenaline, I don't know how to explain it, began in my stomach again and in my spirit. And I lay there, and I just begin to say this. And those of you that are going through it, and I know there are statistics that 25 million mm. Americans go through depression at any one time. And those that are, of you that are going through it, I want you to listen to what the Lord taught me early in the morning. That spirit began to come again to me. 
and was hitting me. And all the things that I had heard all the years about speaking to things, refusing it, telling it to go away, not accepting it, it. I had never really practiced that when it came to depression. I never had. I will be totally honest with you. Mm. I had never done that. But in the bed that, that morning, Paul was asleep. I just felt that coming on. I knew what was going to happen. I knew my day. I knew what it was going to be. And I just said to that spirit, spirit of fear, I refuse you in the name of Jesus. And I just lay there a minute, you know, no lights went off, nothing, you know. And then all of a sudden, I said it again. I, I begin to feel, I said, spirit of de depression and fear, I refuse you. I don't accept what you are trying to put on me today. I refuse to receive it. My spirit will not receive it. Spirit of fear and depression, go. Leave. Just go. And all of a sudden, mm. Benny, the most beautiful, I didn't know if that worked on the spirit of fear and depression. I'd never heard anybody say I heard it about sickness. I'd heard it about disease. I'd, I never heard it on fear and depression. All of a sudden, I heard the most beautiful voice in my ear say this. I did not give you the spirit of fear, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. but of power and love and a sound yes. mind. And all I remember from that moment. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the next thing I remember, it was about nine o'clock in the morning, I had fallen asleep and waked up at nine o'clock in the morning absolutely free from that spirit of fear Beautiful. and depression. Praise <laughs> I, why do we not try things that we know, Benny? I have heard Dad Hagen say that for 15 years. I've heard Ken, say, Ken Copeland say it for 15 years. Brother Osteen, we refuse those spirits of yes. sickness. It was like the devil comes to you with gifts, satanic, demonic, killing, stealing gifts. Yes. And how many mornings had I laid there Except and that. felt that and said, oh, no, here it is. Mm. I'm going to be depressed today. Mm. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be depressed. I'm going to feel ick, icky, and I'm going to want to kill myself. How many mornings I had laid there and accepted that and then didn't go to sleep, all just dreading to get up. But when I tried it, people, <laughs> when I refused mm. what came to me in the middle of the night, yes. Benny, it left. And the voice that I heard that I wish everyone could hear the voice that came in my ear, I did not give you the spirit of fear. It wasn't from God. It was from the devil. Yes. Did anybody catch that little testimony? Yes. Do you hear? Will you try it? <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> Will you not go? <laughs> you know. Please don't be dumb like me. <laughs> a, thought, a thought just hit me, Jan, Benny. If the Spirit of the Lord is really on the way in an unusual, as you saw, tidal wave, yes. 
Doesn't it make sense that Satan, that Satan would try some kind of a preemptive strike on, oh, well, especially on, on Christian leaders That's and people right. who got the front lines? Tell me again, you said that these little demon would, powers, they were getting you, trying to eat you to and, even get your, me and, my pastors. and your other pastors. Right. I saw my pastors in a room and I saw these demons trying to pull us down. But you know something, Jan? You have just said something that is really blowing me away. My people at church would know why, because for, for the last two months, I have not been able to get away from teaching on confession. You see, we got away from it. Yes. Hagen yes. taught us, Stay Copeland there. taught us, right. Fred Price was, well, you know, that's a say it and claim it conference. Mm. But let I, me tell you something. It works. It really works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really works. And the Lord has been doing things in my life where I remembered what Hagen says. Well, you know, I don't know. I know. Then you say it and you see the power there is. Yes. Right. yes. You know what? I saw a scripture I have never seen before. Can I show it to you about sure. this? Sure. It's in the book of Numbers, chapter 14, and I believe it's verse 28. And when I saw it, I said to myself, how come I never saw this before? Look at this. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do it to you. What verse? Verse 28. Numbers 14. God says, when I hear you say it, I'll do it. Oh my. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, so will I, I'm sorry, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. How does that read in the not living? Not very good. Not, not good. Now that's the King James. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, my goodness, you know something, Paul, it's so true. Life and death really are in the part of the tongue. Yes. And God's word states, you are snared by the words of your mouth. You are held a prisoner. I think every Christian ought to read Kenyon, frankly. Yes. Absolutely. Because I'll, I'll tell you, he taught what I believe is what's going to bring the coming revival. And any pastor says, well, I don't want these words. Let me tell you something. We came out of hell with confession. We come, when we confessed Jesus Christ, we came out of darkness, That's didn't we? Right. I mean, from right. hell to heaven. I mean, right. by, it's with with your your mouth. Right. Lord Jesus. by confessing Christ, we came out of darkness. Mm -hmm. Well, goodness gracious, if confession brings us out of darkness, it should bring us into blessings, into life, and into glory. Everything else. And everything else. Yes. But we just hang in between like this. Well, okay, I come out of darkness by confessing Jesus, but I don't want to know. But God's Word says, confession is made unto sozo, salvation. Sozo in Greek means wholeness means health, really? means peace of mind. Yes. Really? It doesn't just mean salvation. Really? Yes, look it up. Sozo means complete wholeness, body, soul, and spirit. Confession is made unto sozo. That proves then that all these other good things we desire from the Lord, we get then by confessing yes. just as we got our it's absolutely eternal but, soul salvation. Well, you know what? Fred Price said something on TBN back a few weeks ago. How... God had to say it in Genesis. You know what God, God said, God said. Yes. You know what I thought about? God didn't have to say anything. And maybe he said that, but I don't really remember. But God didn't have to say anything. He, he, he could have spit on it and it would, would, have, would have still happened. Mm -hmm. he, he could have thought it. He could have blinked it. But he didn't. He spoke it. And who heard it? But himself heard it. Yeah, no one, one else. No one else heard it. <laughs> yeah, who was he talking to? But you know, Jan, you are so right. Jesus dealt with words when he dealt with Satan. He didn't think to cast him out. He said, come out. Well, if the Lord spoke, what's wrong with us? And then Jesus said, Jesus said, now this really got to me because I saw it and I said, Lord, I've never seen this before. But Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. Didn't he? Or not? Okay. Yes. The words of Jesus are spirit. Why? Because they are God's words. You see, the Lord never spoke his own words. He said himself, what I hear the Father saying, I'm saying it. He, I mean, he said himself clearly, it's not I that's doing the speaking, it's the Father in me. So the words of the Father have spiritual power in them. 
Jesus was repeating what he heard the Father say. But why words? Why words? Because God has a system. Mm -hmm. And God's system speaks. I know what you're talking right. about because I remember that program that Brother Fred Price right. was with us. Right. I mean, in Genesis 1 1, and God said, Let right. there be light. And God said, Let there be this. And God said, And God said, And God said. I'm like Fred. If I'd have been God, I'd have said, <laughs> And God said the following. You know, and yes. I only do it one time. <laughs> but he proved that every time he created something else, yes. he did it through the spoken word. You, you see, and he, when that hit me, whoa. I tell you, can I show some, can I show another scripture that I saw I had never, I've never seen before? Yes. Okay. In Hebrews 3 verse 1, it states, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession. Here it says profession in the King James. But the Greek says confession. And the Lord said something to me. He said, do you know that every time you confess... Now listen to this, Paul, because this really blew me away, and I can prove it from Scripture. He's the high priest of our confession. In other words, he cannot be the high priest of those that do not confess. Ooh. He's the high priest of our confession. When I confess, Jesus Christ takes my place in glory. If I don't confess, he doesn't. You know, there's another portion of Scripture we have so messed up. Jesus said, if you deny me on earth, I'll deny you in heaven. Mm -hmm. If you confess me on earth, I'll confess you in heaven. We always think, well, that means if I tell the world Jesus is my Savior, he'll tell the Father, Father, this is Ben Hinn. Well, for goodness sake, the Father knows me already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I mean, come on. Does the Father know us or not? In Isaiah, he said, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. If my father doesn't know me now, I'm in deep trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so what does that mean? Then? It means when I confess him on earth and who he is to me, he confesses in heaven who he is for me. Whoa. Right. It doesn't mean, Father, he has been him. Well, the Father knows I'm been him. <laughs> when he saved me, he knew who I was. So, I mean, what a, what a silly thing for no, the Father to say. Let me, let me be sure I get this. All right. When you whatsoever... If you confess me on earth, Jesus said, right. I will confess, confess you, you before, before the Father in heaven. My heavenly Father. Right. So when I confess Jesus is my Lord, then he what is Jesus doing then up in heaven? He's confessing who he is for me. To you whom? see the Bible, to the Father. See, the Bible says that he's the high priest of my confession. In other words, he takes my place when I confess. I take his place when I confess him on earth. When, when I say, Jesus Christ is my healer on earth, I have confessed him as my healer. In heaven, he confesses, Father, I am his healer. Oh, See, that's okay, what the Bible, okay, that's okay. what the Bible means. Ah. See, that's what the Bible means. In 1 Corinthians 1.30, it states, he is unto us wisdom. He was made, here, I'll show it to you. Wait a minute, then, then I have no choice. If I don't confess these things with, with my mouth, he, he will not confess. confess. Correct. You see, it's like this. Can I show you the scene? It's like this. Whoa. The no, father, no the, wonder a lot of folks don't get healed. The father sits in heaven, all right? Now, the father knows your name and mine. He told us he did. Of course. I mean, the father said, I know them who are mine. Jesus said, I know my sheep. Isaiah said, I have called you by my name. You are mine. When you pass through, through those waters, I'll be with you. Yes. yes. Okay. The Father doesn't need to know who I am. He knows, me better. he knows me better than I know myself, all right? True. Now, I'm on earth. And one day, I confess, as Hebrews 13 tells me, He hath said, so I might boldly say. So I say, the Lord Jesus is my deliverer. Mm. The devil comes against me. I have to confess who Jesus is in my life. He's my deliverer. Instantly, Jesus in heaven confesses that same confession. He's the high priest of my confession. My confession. My confession. In other words, what I confess, he repeats. And he says, Father, I'm his deliverer. The Father speaks. Instantly the Holy Spirit hears and comes and makes it happen. Whoa. All right. All right. That's just the way it is, Paul. I had never yes. thought of it that way. You know, I tell you, 10 years ago, I would have not even believed I this know. stuff. 
I know. Ten years ago, I said, oh, come on, that's a Satan claim. It's tough. Uh, three weeks ago, I wouldn't have believed it worked for depression. I had but never, it told, works, I'd never told anybody And that. do you know how it began changing in my life? You practiced it. Well, no, God had to put me in a spot where I had to have it happen. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're in a spot. He said, well, now let me try it out. Yeah, that's exactly. And you try it out, think, well, now I'm not sure. But next thing you know, faith comes into your heart because God won't work it out if you're kind of questioning his promise, all right? Well, it worked. I know it works. Well, Jenny. of course. I mean, the, the naysayers uh, well, I know you know that. have course, reached. I know you're that. preaching to the <laughs> choir right now. I, I know <laughs> this works. It, it re- but I had quite never put it together the way you, you know, the way you said it. I'd never thought of it in terms of the high Jesus. priest of my confession. Oh, my goodness. He means. can't be the high priest of those that don't confess. What is a high priest? One who takes the place of. He's not praying, oh, Lord, save them. I'm saved already. Jesus isn't praying for me to stay saved, all right? No. He's not praying for me to stay. What he's doing is confessing who he is in my life. So if I'm sick, I must confess with of my mouth, of course. Jesus is my healer. And then he confesses he is your healer in heaven. Then what happens? Then the Father speaks it again, and the Holy Ghost hears it and comes and does it. See, the Bible states, let us not... The scripture states in Hebrews 10, don't quit confessing. Okay, 1038. Now, one quick thing, though. Yes. Now, this is not the only way God heals. No, no, of course, of course, of course. Now, you know, I myself am not, uh, you know, I've seen healings happen uh, through the word. I've seen healings happen through the laying on on of hands, uh, through the word of knowledge, and and so on. But Paul, you see, warfare cannot be fought without words in our faith. Amen. All right? I know. The devil cannot be won without words. The demons will not flee without words. Unless we speak it, we will be defeated. Mm -hmm. So Hebrews 13 states, He hath boldly... Here. Hebrews 13 and let's see, verse... um, I didn't really come all ready for this, but let me just do it, all right? This is just the first sermon, folks. Yeah, we'll that's verse 5 and 6. Listen, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. Where for are we? That's verse 5, Hebrews 13. Mm-hmm. Okay, Hebrews 13, 5. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, He said it, so I may say it. The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Mm. I say it only if he says it. Mm. Eber loves to quote Psalm 91, all right? But they miss one portion. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and and my fortress. Okay? I will say, but I don't just say that. See, the psalmist in Psalm 91 states, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then he said, I will say. And everything under that is what he's saying. He's not just saying verse 2. He's saying, no evil shall befall thee. He's saying, no plague shall come nigh my dwelling. But he's saying it. You know what? Do do you all remember Papa Bilheimer? Dad Paul Bilheimer that wrote that fabulous book, Destined for the Throne? Yes. And Love Covers and other wonderful books. He was a, a precious little Wesleyan Methodist, you know. And uh, I remember one day, I'll tell a little secret on him that he, he told me one day. He said, uh, we were trying to figure out, you know, where we all fit denominationally, doctrinally, you know, and other way. It was probably a mistake to do that, but we were just chatting a little bit. And I said, Dad Bilheimer, you know, really, what, what are you? I know you say that your roots were Wesleyan and are Wesleyan Methodists. And he grinned at me a little bit. He said, well, Paul, he said, I'll tell you what. He said, I guess I'm a non-tongues-talking charismatic, if there is such a critter. That's uh, exactly <laughs> what he said to me. But he, he took me that same day on this very subject that we were on, and he proved to me from another scripture. In Revelation chapter, I believe it's chapter 12, where it says, and, and they 11, over." Yes came him, meaning they overcame Satan right. 
by the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony. Mm. And Dad Wilheimer said that the Lord began dealing with him about this. You know, we always think the words of our testimony is Wednesday night prayer meeting. We get up and say how wonderful the Lord has been to us. And, you know, we give a testimony. No, no. He said the first time he experimented a little bit, just, just like you were saying. Yes. He said almost with fear and trepidation. He was almost afraid to do it. But he had a very serious condition in his body. And he said, I'm going to do it. Now, this was before he'd ever heard Brother Hagen or Brother Copeland or Brother Price or Brother Osteen or any of these wonderful faith preachers and teachers. And he said, with fear and trembling, I said out loud, I overcome you, mm -hmm. Satan, by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of my testimony is, you are a defeated foe in the name of Jesus. The blood is... And he said, instantly, that heaviness, that oppression, that depression left him. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I, I say again, we read all these good things in the Bible. Yes. We hear Brother Copeland or Brother Hagen or other great preachers and teachers of the Word say, but like Jan, you just don't literally really get down to business and do it. I had never done it. And you know, I woke up that day about 9 o'clock in the morning with feeling of joy, mm. a feeling of joy. And I, you know, I just told that for one purpose. For those of you that are going through it out there, please try it. Let Jesus heal you that way. You know, I don't understand about just refusing a gift. Now, what is the, the gift of sickness and depression from the devil? Can he literally come to a blood-bought, spirit-filled Christian and hand them something and it's if there? If you take it, if you take it. Huh? Uh, is he allowed to do that? Well. He tried it on Jesus, didn't he? That's right. He tried it on a blood-bought, spirit-filled. <laughs> you see, you know, Sonny Paul, the coming move that I told you about, I asked the Lord, I said, mm. How is it going to happen, Lord? Because after I saw that vision, may I, by the way, you know, share with you a little bit on yeah. this thing? Please, because a lot of folks have just tuned in and All right. didn't hear the first part about that tremendous vision the Lord gave you. Can well, I'll just you know, tell you again, I had a vision about two weeks ago where I saw a tidal wave. I actually was taken to space, and I don't think you think I'm a weirdo. Believe me, I'm not. And, and I was taken into space in the spirit and saw a tidal wave coming towards our planet. And it splashed it. I just splashed it everywhere. Every continent was splashed. And then I saw myself and my pastor speaking against devils. But when we spoke, water gushed out of our mouth. Mm. Just like Jesus said. So I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, how will it happen? And the Lord spoke this to me and he said, it's not going to happen in the large churches of America. So that's what he said to me. Really? He said, it's not going to begin. I'm sorry. It's not going to begin in the large churches of America. He said, it will begin in the living rooms of my people. Really? Yes. Ooh. And uh, because, you know, you know the, uh, the, the charismatic movement didn't begin in the big denominations. No. It began in small groups and then it just spread. That will happen again. But you know something, Paul? It took most of us people to catch up with the charismatic movement five or six years, seven years later. I mean, the move began in 67 with two Catholic priests in Notre Dame. But most of us guys, like myself and many others, were caught in 71, 70, 72, when the fires really hit us. Mm -hmm. I don't believe this move will take that long before it really catches everybody. But then the word of the Lord came to you, and it was what? In the Lord told me in a... a my ears heard my mouth talk bluntly. That's what, what happened. Three and a half months. The latter part of May of this year. It will begin. The great revival. It's not going to hit. I don't believe it's, it's going to hit everybody. But the, the move will begin in three and a half months. Yes. Could this be really then, Benny, the, 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 the beginning of that, of that latter reign? You know, we know we've had the former well, reign. Well, we you know, know, it could be because Smith Wigglesworth prophesied. I mean... Smith Wigglesworth was a man of God. He said the 80s. He actually said, now here's his prophecy, by the way. If I can tell you his whole prophecy was.
he said we would see a move of the Spirit first, which would be followed by a move of the Word. That has happened. Yes. We had the charismatic movement and the Word movement. Yes. He said at the end of the Word movement, he said just when the Word movement would be closing up, or I think the, he used some word like changing or something like this, mm -hmm. would come a move of God with a combination of both. Spirit and Word, which will bring the greatest move of God ever. I asked you a moment ago, how do you think that will really manifest itself? Oh, well, I can tell you the way I believe. Now, again, the Lord hasn't shown me details except to tell me it's going to begin in living rooms. And God shook me up really badly with one, one other thing that I am not sure I really like to tell you all about it, but, but, but I will. Mm. The Lord said to me, He said, in that move, I will save and deliver the people you consider to be a plague to me personally. And I can just be blunt with you. I hope nobody gets mad with me. Who might that be? The homosexuals. Really? Yes, sir. Really? Yes, sir. Really? Ah, God's ways are higher than and our ways, aren't they? Not? I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, no, no, you can't do that. <laughs> yes, yes, he can. And, you know what, and do you know what God said to me? Yes, Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Do you know what God said to me? What? He said the last move. God actually spoke those words to me. He said the last move, the plague were the hippies. Yes. And I brought them to the, the house Jesus of the Lord. Movement. The Jesus movement were the hippies. Right. Yes, of course. And pastors all over America that received them saw revival. Yes. And the big Now, churches. the plague now is the homosexuals. So nobody wants to touch them, you know. Just, no. you get away from me kind of a thing. The AIDS. But yeah, God it. Almighty is going to prove to the world and the church that Fantastic. He can clean them up. Fantastic. God can do anything. He can do anything. Yeah. It's right. Glory. So you know what? It took a lot out of me, a pastor, to pray a prayer recently where I lifted my hands and said, Lord, send them. Yes. Oh. Send them, yes. Lord. Yes. Send Amen. them. And yes. I didn't think I could really pray that with honesty, I'll Amen. tell you frankly. Amen. Because, you know, as a pastor, it's a, well, you know, I'm very comfortable with what I got. You know, I don't want some plagued people coming in here. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said to me, He said, do you believe I can do it? I said, yes, sir, you can. Mm -hmm. and that's all. But the other thing that God showed me, which should very much excite you. Now, Paul, the Lord told me this. And I remembered what you said five years ago, six years ago to me. The Lord said to me, He said, the day is coming when people will be delivered and healed, not when they watch a Christian program, but when they turn it on and the voice comes on. Whoa. Just when the voice comes on. Just tune to the right Just channel. Just tune to the right channel. Oh, oh glory. And brother, God. I'm telling you. Just like the shadow of Peter yes. falling upon people that weren't even... You know, the thing that really amazes me is people say, well, how can that be? It's happening now in Europe. It's happening in Southeast Asia. I just came from Malaysia. I could not believe my own eyes. What happened? Well, Muslims getting saved. We had 15,000 people my first trip ever. A thousand pastors. The miracles that I saw stunned my mind. Praise More God. people came with huge, large, big, what do you call those things? Growth. Tumors and growth. growth. Disappeared in front of our eyes, Paul. Mm. Miracles took place that absolutely you stood there and you were numb. You thought, dear God, or I'm dreaming, or this is happening. In Africa, it's happening. In Southeast Asia, it's happening. In Europe, it's happening. Look what's happening with Reinhard Bunke. Yes. I mean, he's seeing millions walk into the kingdom. Now, America, we've had two years of pain, so we thought, oh, Lord, I'm not sure that, you know, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Amen. Let, let me tell you something. America is going to have it better than anywhere else. Because we've had so much pain here. How do you think, how do you think this first great wave will, will manifest itself? Well, I think it's going to manifest first, frankly. I think it's going to start manifesting in, in uh, people's homes. They, they will be visited by the Lord. Well, he said that, didn't he? Yeah. Is, Get ready, people! Is, is there anything... <laughs> Man, I tell you, I... I feel it just talking about it. Thank you. Benny, is there, is there anything that, that maybe the body of Christ ought to begin doing right now? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Because I'll tell you, 
No move of God can come to us if we're sitting prayerless. We've got to get ready and pray. Mm. I told my people, I said, look, I'm not going to be like those that have the cloud pass by them and say, oh, it just passed by me. I want to be ready for it. And you know what happened? When the Lord moved in the Old Covenant, when the cloud moved, Moses had to, had to unpack the whole tabernacle. Yes. That's a big job to unpack. A lot of times say, well, I don't want to un unpack and move again. And I'm talking about spiritually now, all right? Yeah. But God will require us to change our ways and say, look, Lord, if you're doing a new thing, I'll move with it. Mm. And oh. God's going to do a new thing. Mm. One of the new things that will happen, Paul, you'll watch, is young people. Our young people are going to catch the fire probably faster than most folks. And, and I'm, I'm expecting to see it happen uh, in Orlando this year. I believe it's going to happen in... In May. It, I mean, in May. <laughs> thank you. By the way, you know what? Before we go any further, I have a check for you. You do? Yes, yes, yes. For, for me? Well, for TBN. <laughs> yes. Now, first, this is a check, just a little gift from, from our church. Mercy. And this, and this, by the way, is... Uh, I, you know, I want to say something. You can close your ears on this one, all right? But a lot of you pastors What's have been this? blessed by TBN. I mean, your churches have had crowds. You've had people join your church. Look, I'm a pastor. I'm not a TBN employee, all right? <laughs> so I can talk to you. You've had people join your church as a result of TBN. And I believe TBN needs to be on your budget. Mm. Bless you. Benny, this is... Now, can well, I well, tell them how much? No, that, you can tell them this. Now, this is what we give you every month. Yes. Right? Yes, I know So that. that's added to this. Oh, my goodness. $7,000. From Orlando Christian, Christian Center. To TBN. Benny. Yes. <laughs> and well, thank brother, you wonderful friends great. at Orlando Christian Center. Well, I tell you, you know... Paul, you what, mean... What's this for? Well, this? because we love you simple. I mean, there's no big, too many any big reasons why we should give gifts to each other like this. <laughs> you see, I'll, I'll tell you, Paul, I'll tell you. TBN has done so much in Orlando through 55. Now, by the way, Claude Barras gave you a gift to Claude. I just told him, all right? Yeah. Claude gave you a gift, and I gave it to Jan, by the way, Claude. And uh, they have it. I right? haven't looked at it yet. And, and uh, but... Your programs and programs, you know, Claude is playing more than one of your programs, yes, as you know, I know, have blessed our area, have sure added to churches, have brought souls into the kingdom. Well, Benny, and I think every pastor ought to, from time to time, say thank you. Yes. Bless your, well, thank, thank you, you, and you. thanks we to all the wonderful oh, friends. Thank and let's thank Orlando. Do you know what this will do? This will pay for two of those little radio stations. Do anything you want with it. <laughs> All right. I, I, my next newsletter coming out has a report. We're working hard on the new radio network, as well as, of course, we've still got over 40 TV station permits that we're building TV stations now, just all the time. About 16 will be on this first quarter of 1989. You know, pastors can help you if they put you on their, on their budget like we have. And uh, let me just talk just for 30 seconds, pastors, to you. If you will sow in such, a, in such a ministry, and I'm not trying to win points with Paul here. We, we've been friends for a long time, all right? Of course. But if you sow in such a ministry, you will reap a harvest like you would not believe. The reason is, is because this man really puts it to the gospel. It's not going for big homes and cars and all the rest of it. It's really going to reach souls. TBN truly ministers to the body of Christ. And you pastors need to do something about it. Take it from me, please. Did, did, did we get that on tape? <laughs> Thank you, Benny. I really love you for that. And I appreciate that. And I promise, I promise you, this will be used to win souls and to get more stations on the air so that your message will go further. And all of the word of the Lord will go further. You're really preaching the gospel. And thank God for Paul Crouch. Don't you agree? Thank God for Paul and Jan. Bless your heart. We got one little scripture before Steve Brock sings us a song. And, and then, like I said, this was just warm up. This is, you know, the, the best is yet to come. I want to, I, I know Benny's got a word for you. We're going to have him just preach the gospel. 
get everybody around the TV set in just a few moments. We want Thank Benny to me. just take yes. his liberty and pray for the sick. How many in this room tonight need a healing touch in your body tonight? You really do. Many hands going up You right know, now. those that are standing back there, maybe you can sit on the floor or, or something. Ooh. You're going to need healings for your legs after a while. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll have you pray for everybody. <laughs> there's, there's one little girl in here who came up to me just before the program, and she says, I have a dead chicken I need for you to pray for. <laughs> I, said, I said, how long has he been dead? said, a long time. My dog killed him. <laughs> so I said, well, I don't know about that one. <laughs> well, I have to pray about that. But God can do anything. Yes. Can he? Really. Do you right. know, when you were talking about the vision, and all and what God's going to do. My eyes just fell on a wonderful scripture. It's in Revelation. It says, Then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens. It has happened at last. God's salvation and the power and the rule and the authority of his Christ are finally here. Amen. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down from heaven unto earth. He accused them day and night before our God, but they defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. For they did not love their lives, but laid them down for him. Rejoice, O heaven, you citizens of heaven, rejoice and be glad. But woe to the people of the world, for the devil has come down to you in great anger, knowing that he has a little time. That kind of fits into all your vision. And the you know demons something? around the feet, knowing The common market nations time. are uniting economically. I know. In 1992, Paul, we are in the last hour. Jesus is coming. I tell you. And do you know what else? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I'll just, I'll just toss this in. I don't know if you heard this or not. Doug Clark just called me, and of course he keeps up on all of the prophetic news. He said that Khomeini has now said, <clears throat> not only has he got that $5 million bounty on the head of the guy that wrote Satanic Verses, whew, that's another whole subject, but um, all I got to say is the guys that did the last temptation of Christ better be glad we're Christians. And that's not right. Christians. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. And I, I wonder if, if MCA has picked up to do the movie, Satanic Verses. Do you think MCA Universal Pictures will do the movie, Satanic Verses? We'll see. <laughs> yeah. We'll I, see. I rather doubt it. I rather doubt it. Did you hear that a bookstore was, was, was or a newspaper yes, fire today. Uh, was firebombed? Fire I know. For just writing a, a unfriendly article about Khomeini and, and the... Anyway, the point is, Khomeini had a news conference and has said, now, I don't know exactly what paper, and Doug is going to be here later this week on Thursday or Friday. I'm going to be back in Houston for the final two nights of, of praise on here, Thursday and Friday. But Khomeini has said, now, we're going to join forces with our real friends, the Russians, and we are going to purge the Middle East of this Western corruption and influence. Khomeini has said it. Doug Clark said it. He doesn't know that's in the Bible, does he? I know. Ezekiel chapter 38. I mean, one of these days, you old skeptics out there are going to say, whoa, these guys were onto something. When you wake up some morning and the headlines scream, Middle East invaded, Israel invaded by Russia and Arab hordes. Uh, I think we'll have Hal Lindsey on that night, and we will have a review on Ezekiel 38, 39, okay? Anyhow, exciting things are happening, and Benny, I want you to know that that word from the Lord blesses me as, as almost nothing else in recent times, but because I too have traveled, and I've seen the move of God in, in Africa, I've seen the move of God in other parts of the world. But what about us here in America? When are we going to see that mighty tidal wave Thank this God. year? Glory to God. Did you all get excited just thinking about it up there? Let's pray and ask the Lord to really yes. let us be a part of it. I want to be right in the middle of it. I want to, be, I want to have live TV cameras on the tidal wave when it hits. Amen. In With Jesus Steve name. Rock singing. With Steve singing. The church triumphant yes. is alive, alive and well. Or something. And well. 
He's going to sing a couple of songs tonight, and then I want Benny to take this word, and I want us to just let the precious Holy Amen, Spirit Lord, thank do you. whatever He wants to do. Did you know yeah. I believe? I don't want to be overly dramatic, but I honestly believe this is the only live television program in the world that prays, Holy Spirit, come and do what you want to do. That's right. And if you will agree with that and us together, we can see the beginnings of that great tidal wave, Benny, and we can see the glory of God come and fill this TV Amen. studio tonight. Amen. And you that are sick in this room can rise and be healed in the name in of Jesus. Jesus name. You at home that have been suffering, oh, some of you for years and years, can arise in the name of Jesus and be healed. I'm going to agree with you and believe God with you tonight. And we're going to say some things tonight. Did you all get a hold of that? You can't. You can't get everything you need from the Lord with your mouth shut. Okay? We learned something tonight, didn't we? Now, let's put it into practice. A beautiful song of praise as you get ready. Get your Bibles out and let's just get ready for the Holy Spirit to take charge of whatever He wants to do tonight. I love this song, Steve, that you sing so beautifully. His grace is greater. Let's welcome Steve Brock as he sings. The wonderful, amazing grace of Almighty God. Powerful grace. Dynamic grace reaches even you and me. Whatever the situation, circumstance, you and I can confess. Confess His grace is greater. His grace is greater than my failure. deeper than my fear. When we go to Him, we see our hearts can rest Simply trust in Him when times we may not understand. Listen now. Passing doubt can bend His grace is greater Keeps me in the palm of His hand Hallelujah! Oh, how many souls have come to Him So helpless and so lost
I feel like having church around here. I don't know about you. Anybody feel what I feel? Shout praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Everybody help me sing now. Amen. Listen to my story. Story about Jesus. Amen. Amen. See the little baby wrapped in a manger. Christmas morning. Amen. Amen. See you by the seashore. Talking to the fisherman. He was making them disciples. Amen. 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 to the Father in great sorrow. He was in deep sorrow for his sweat became as great drops of blood. Then they led him before Pilate. Pilate didn't know what to do with him, so he gave him to the people and the soldiers, and they crucified him. They buried him. But he rose on Easter morning. And sit down on that song. Yeah. Let's all stand up and just give the Lord a mighty praise offering tonight. What a wonderful night we're having here, Channel 14 in Houston, Texas. God's people are getting excited about what God is about to do. What a joy to have Benny Hinn here with us tonight. And I want to tell you, if you're hurting tonight, if you're suffering in body, if you've been seeking God for a long time for something that you haven't gotten to break through and get the answer on, tonight's your night. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel something happening Glory. down deep in my soul right now. I really do, folks. I think the first splash of that tidal wave has already hit planet Earth, Benny. I tell you, brother, this Take is your liberty. incredible. Take your liberty. People, are you ready for the Lord to move mightily here? If you are, say amen. Amen. Steve Brock, you can sing, brother. You can sing beautifully. Yes, Bless the amen. Lord for Steve Brock. Take your seats. It's just a little bit there. You know what? This move of God that's coming to America, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be a move of warfare. Are you ready for a mighty move of God? It's going to be a move of warfare. Yes. You see, this is not going to be a move where we're going to sit in our wonderful bedrooms or living rooms and sing hallelujah. This is going to be a move. You see, the Lord spoke that to me. Mm -hmm. He said, this is going to be a move of warfare. It's not going to be a move of great songs and great spiritual picnics. It's going to be a move where the devil is going to be defeated. Glory to God. Glory. Now take your Bibles. Would you please, everybody, just take your Bibles. Thank God for people like Dean and... Um, Mary Brown that can sing so beautifully and Steve Brock and all these greats that prepare the Word of God. Now tonight, as I'm preaching, God is going to heal the sick. 
Glory to God. Now I want you all to hear this because we are living in an hour where the Lord is revealing to us, His church, who we are. So turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Everybody, please. 2 Corinthians 5. What I'm about to show you from God's word is going to get you jumping. It's going to get the devils of hell scared. I tell you that. Good. Let me hear a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Something that began to really bother me a few weeks ago was this. I was sitting thinking, Brother Paul, and I thought, you know, there's something that really is bothering me. How is it that the devil has taught his people how with words, listen to this, with words, witches can kill birds. True, true. With words, they can place a curse on a man and bring death to that man. With words, they can bring supernatural evil on men and women. Yes. And I began to get really bothered by this. I thought, goodness, it seems the devil has got mo more power flowing through his folks mm. than God has flowing through us. God help us. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, it shouldn't be that way. Amen. And suddenly the Lord began to show me, bit by bit, things that are absolutely bringing a revolution to my life, personally, my life. It's really amazing that the Lord set the whole tone for this whole wonderful thing here this evening with what Jan shared about how she had to speak. Mm. All right, now listen to me. If the devil can teach his people how with words they can kill and destroy, God teaches us how with words we can bring life Amen. and healing Amen. and glory Amen. and deliverance. So people of God, let's learn how to talk. Amen. Yes. Amen. Let's learn how to talk. It's time we learn how to talk. The Bible states in 2 Corinthians 5.17, a very familiar portion of scripture. Amen. Now listen carefully. Here it is. Therefore, if any, man, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The word creature there, the Greek says a species that never existed before. Whoa. <laughs> Right. Oh. All things are passed away. All things. What are the old things? The old things are sickness and disease and death and misery and poverty. Mm. All that the devil gives are old things. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now listen to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say something going to shock you, but I'm glad. <laughs> it's an insult to God for me, a Christian, to walk into his presence and say, I'm a sinner. Hmm. Now listen, just, just listen. Look, check me up with the book, would you please? It's an insult to my Father in heaven for me to walk in and say, I am a sinner. The Bible doesn't say that I am a sinner. They said, well, well, now hold it, hold it. I am a sinner. Brother, let me tell you something. This book says in verse 21 of this same chapter, Listen. Now, now, don't conclude things in your mind now, all right? I'm not teaching heresy, believe me. <laughs> Verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. I was a sinner. Amen. I was, I said, a mm. sinner. Oh, Lord. I was lost. I was in darkness. I was in, in misery. I was dead. But today, when I approach my Heavenly Father, I don't say I'm a sinner. I approach Him with boldness and say, Father, I am the righteousness of your Son. Yes, Lord. Now look, our minds can't figure this thing out. Because our minds run by sense knowledge. Our minds tell us, well, now that can't be, now hold it, that can be. You are a sinner, you know, you are a miserable, terrible, horrible sinner. But that's not what the Word says. The Word says, when we sin, we confess our sin. The Bible says it is impossible once you're born again to go back into that old life. Now, we sin because of weakness. Sure, we do. Everybody does. 
I sin, but I don't sin when I, now hear me, I don't sin by deciding to sin. None of us mm -hmm. sin by saying, I'm going to go and do it because the Holy Ghost within us has brought a new creation inside of us. But when you and I fail, we fail miserably because this body fights us all the time. We step into the Father's presence and say, Father, I confess my sin. But we, when we confess it, we ought to forget it. Amen. Because it's gone. Yes, amen. It's gone, I said. Amen. It's gone. Yes. Now, Jesus, in John 5, look at it. Would you please, everybody turn with me? Now, I'm, I'm going to say some very, very different things tonight. But I want you to hear me. And please, for the Lord's sake, don't take one little portion and say he said that. Hear the whole message, would you please? Amen. How people would like to take a little portion? Oh, he said, he said we shouldn't say I'm a sinner. I'm not saying that. You better stop eating your pizza and listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, the word is balanced. That's right. Amen. I said the word is balanced. Yes. yes. All right. Now, Jesus said, I'm not saying it. Jesus said, all right. Now, these are the words of the master. Verse 25 of John 5. Verily. Verily I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man, and they that hear shall live. Now look at verse 24, because here he's talking in verse 25 about life. Verse 24 states, Verily, verily I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation and shall not come into condemnation now or the lord means it or he doesn't mean it the bible states there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in christ the scripture states i will not remember thy sins anymore the Bible says you're a new creation. All things are passed away. And the Bible says the reason that is, is because he who knew no sin became your sin that you might become his righteousness. Now, or God means this or he doesn't mean this. Amen. Now, listen very carefully to me. There are three voices talking to us all the time, ladies and gentlemen. There's the devil's voice, number one. And the devil is always talking. I have news for you. I have news for you. Now hear my whole message, please. When a child is born into this world, when a baby is born into this world, the devil speaks the plan for that life. You say, how, how do you know? Because fortune tellers can tell the mm. parent mm. that child's future. True. How can fortune tellers tell a mama or a daddy who seem to believe in this stuff? Go to these people, and how can they do it? Because witches hear it from devils that heard it from Satan himself. Yes, yes. Now Satan speaks the plan for every child on this planet. But I have news for you. When you are born again, your heavenly Father speaks a new plan for your life. Yes, hallelujah, good. And that new plan is spoken, Ephesians tell me. Ephesians tells me God speaks the plan. Now, the Holy Spirit heard it and wrote it in this Bible. Amen. Yes. We do not need to go to some fellow over here and there say, what's God's plan for my life? Amen. You know, I asked God one day, I said, Lord, why, do, why don't you speak to me every day like you talk to your son Jesus? The Lord said, if I would, you won't hear me. Your, your ears are too dull. I said, Lord, what do you want? You're just going to talk to me every day and tell me, you do this today and you do that today. And the Lord said to me, he, he said, that's really my desire. But he said, frankly, if I would do that, you'd never hear it because you're so dull. <laughs> but he said this to me. He said, one day, I told you everything you would ever hear from me. I said, oh, how's that, Lord? He said, since I knew you would want me to talk to you every day, and since I knew you, you were so dull of hearing me, I told the Holy Ghost everything I would ever want to tell you, and he wrote it down in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, if you'll simply open the Bible, you'll know exactly what I'm telling you to do. <laughs> so I said, that's it, Lord, that's it. <laughs> now listen to me, people of God. He told me that I am his righteousness. See, once you're born again, you come into a new plan. 
Not a plan of death, but life. Not sin, but righteousness. Not death, but eternal life. Not poverty, but prosperity. Amen. Not sadness, but joy. Amen. Not confusion, Good. but peace. Praise Not weakness, you. but strength. Thank you, Jesus. See, what the devil speaks on each child that's born into this world is disaster and death and misery and the rest of it. Mm. When God brings a new born babe, you and me, and I'm talking about the new birth now, not physical birth, spiritual birth. When you're born again, God speaks his plan on your life. Now the devil is always talking to you. Do you realize the devil talks to you all the time? He tells you how miserable you are, how horrible you are, how what, what, a, what a failure you are. You see, the devil speaks through sickness. When sickness comes on your body, that's the voice of Satan telling you he's going to kill you. Oh, sure. When confusion comes to your mind, that's the voice of the devil. And let me tell you something. The devil also speaks through very sincere people that don't know they're talking the devil's language. Like Peter came and said to the Lord, Now, Lord, you're not going to die, really, are you? And Jesus recognized the source and said, Get behind me, Satan. True. Yeah. The Lord didn't rebuke Peter. He rebuked the source. Amen. Now, the second voice that talks to us every day is God's word. That's God speaking. And the third voice is your own. See, here's the thing that people do not realize. Your spirit man is a very powerful, powerful person. I always wondered how do witches speak words and kill birds with them? But maybe there's demons just fly out or something. Till I discovered from God's word that the evil spirit develops the human spirit to become united to it. A witch, an ex-witch told me, she said, how do you know all this stuff about this? I said, well, lady, it's in the book. You see how the devil did it before, and he's still doing it. See, what the devil does, he trains these people how to develop their human spirits where they become so united to his mentality and his voice that when they speak, demons cooperate with their voice. Are you hearing me? God Almighty, greater in power than all the powers of hell, God Almighty, who originally had this plan in mind to train your spirit how to talk his language, how to defeat the enemy with that, and how to bring life, placed in this book his system. The first book of Genesis shows us God's system of talking, like we said earlier. Now the Bible tells me this marvelous truth. There are three voices that are talking at all times. And there's power, listen to me, there is power when I repeat. Example, if the devil says you're sick and I repeat it, there is power in what I said that I heard him say and so it will happen. See, the power never, please hear this, the power is not released till I repeat it. This is the part we so ignore, you see. We think, well, now, you know, there's power in the devil's words. You don't understand. The power is released through your words. Jesus, help. The devil can say all he wants, you're going to die. There'll be no power in these words if you say, no, I won't. Amen. You break those, those Good. Good. you break that power. Brother, I'm telling you the truth. This, this is God's truth. I was standing on my father's grave site in 1982. I heard the devil tell me, I'm going to kill you in a year. With people standing around, paying their last respects, I spoke loud and said, no, you won't. Amen. And they looked at me like, who is he talking to? <laughs> and when I left the site, I said, no, you won't. No, you won't. I break your words. A year later, I'm on an airplane. It runs out of gas. A little Cessna in 83. Right. Oh, yes. And when it ran out, I heard the devil say it again, I told you I would kill you. And right in the plane, I spoke again, you cannot kill me. Amen. You will not kill me. Mm. 
And that plane crashed and turned four times, and I walked out of that plane without a scratch on my body. It works. Now, had I said, oh my God, had I said, oh my God, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I would have died. Yes, I believe. But that. you see, we break words that's, that have been spoken against us with words. What did Isaiah 54 state? It states this, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Now hear this, hear this. And every tongue that shall arise against thee in judgment. Whose tongue is arising against me in judgment? But the tongue of hell. Yeah. It states, thou shalt condemn. Yeah. I will condemn the tongue that speaks against me. How do I condemn the tongue that speaks against me but by speaking back? Amen. You see, we all like the first part. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. But hold it, that's not the whole verse. <coughs> it states, and every tongue that shall arise against thee in judgment. Thou, not God. Mm. Thou, not the angels. Oh. Thou shalt condemn. Whoa, that's good. That's we good. condemn that tongue good. when we talk back. So when the devil came and said, I'm going to kill you, I said, no, you won't. Amen. And even though the plane crashed, I came out alive without a scratch on my skin. Why? Because my mouth kept my body healthy and alive. Amen. Now, people, I'll tell you more. You see, this is where the body of Christ has really missed it, in my opinion. And I was one of them. I'll, t I'll tell you bluntly. I became a pastor of a church and had to learn the hard way that Kenneth Hagin was right. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I had to learn the hard way he was right because when God gave me a church and I ran into an obstacle I began praying and one day God said quit praying <laughs> quit praying he said I said Lord I gotta pray he said I'm weary of hearing you asking things that I already gave you <laughs> All right. he said that to me he said I am weary of hearing you tell me about things that already are yours. I said, and Lord, what do I do? And the Lord spoke to my heart a verse from Isaiah. He said, concerning my sons and daughters, command ye me. Yes. When it comes to my sons and daughters, don't beg me. It's yours already. Amen. Just command it. And I thought, well, I can't do that. Only God can command. But you see, what I didn't understand is who I was and who I am. Now listen to this. If Jesus said, I am his righteousness. And I walk into his presence and say, I'm a sinner. Then I literally insult what he's done. He said, but Benny Hinn, you see, here's where your problem is. You have been so programmed to believe you're a sinner. You are sin conscious. All right? You're failure conscious. No, I'm not telling you how to program your mind to think like a superman. I'm telling you how to believe God and what he said. Now, God Almighty said... Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on the Son of Man. Do you believe on God's Son? Yes. Are you born again? Yes. Within you, do you love God? Yes. Do you hate sin? Yes. Then Jesus said, the spirit man is perfect. Amen. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit, Paul. Is he or not? Amen. The Bible states what? The Bible states, I didn't say it, people. I'm not inventing all this stuff. God's word says it. I mean, I'm so tired. People say, well, now, Benny Hinn, you're teaching error. Let me tell you, brother, if truth in your ears is error, there's something wrong with you. Good. Amen. Amen. Good. When you teach truth, they tell you it's error. Well, go back to college. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you right here. He said that I am his righteousness. Now, I can say, Lord, you're a liar. I don't believe that then I'm going to stay what I believe I am. But you see, when I begin to believe what he said about me and I confess it, I destroy the effects of sin in my life. The Bible states sin shall not have dominion over you. Amen. The Bible states he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. The Bible states you love me as you love them. You know what really blew me away one day is I thought, Father, you can't love me the same way you love your son. And the Lord said, why am I a liar? Mm. 
but, but, but Lord, he said, the problem with you is you're trying to believe it with your mind. He said, the word says, I love you as much as my son. Now, people, mm. let me ask you a question. Does the Bible say or not, ye are complete in him? Yes. yes. Does the Bible say yes or no? Does the Bible say these words? Listen to this. Now, this is going to really blow you away. Where? I'm going to show it to you in Hebrews. Hebrews. Now, when I saw this, I said, no, 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 that can't be true. That can't be me. And the Lord said to me, or you believe me or you don't. Now. Oh boy, this is something. Hebrews what? Okay, Hebrews 10, verse 38, that states, Now the just shall live <laughs> by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. If I am just, I can only be just by faith. Now, Stay with me because I'm not through just, I'm just getting warm here, frankly, really. Can I take my jacket off? Go ahead. Surely. <laughs> I can preach better when I'm cooler, you know? Now, God Almighty created angels. And he looked at those angels and he said, I'm creating them to serve me. Not love me, not fellowship with me, just serve me. One third of them rebelled against him and became his enemies. So God said to himself, I'm going to make another creation. I'll call him man. So he created Adam. Now listen to this. These are new revelations. Some of you haven't heard before, but that's all right. Because we're not here to teach things you heard all your life. He created man who was created higher than angels in that he was created in the likeness and image of God. And no angel is created in that. But. He created Adam to love him and fellowship with him, but he did not place eternal life in Adam. So, ooh, never heard that before? I'll prove it to you. God created angels to serve him, man to love him and fellowship with him. But he kept one thing away from Adam and that's eternal life. You see, had Adam been created, as angels to live eternally, he'd still be alive today. It's proof number one. Proof number two. God places a tree called the tree of life in the garden. Why would he place a tree of life if the man didn't need it? So God creates Adam without eternal life living in him, but gave him the choice to choose it. Gave him the choice to say, Lord, I want to live forever and could have eaten of that fruit and stayed alive still. Instead, though, he chose a tree that was forbidden. God said, of each tree you can eat, including the tree of life, Adam. He chose the tree of the knowledge of good and evil which exalts self. When he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, his spirit man died. What is spiritual death? Union with Satan. He died spiritually, became united to the satanic nature. And began to die physically. At that point, his body began to die. Up to this point, the Lord kept his physical body Filled with life and said the words, if you eat of this tree, you'll die. He died spiritually and began to die physically. The next thing you know, he makes his way to the tree of life. And an angel came and stopped between he and the, and the tree of life. Why would an angel come and say, you can't touch it? Because Adam was going to eat of it. See, Adam woke up and said, oh my God, I'm dying and I don't like this feeling. Mm -hmm. And said to himself, I better go eat of the, of the tree of life. But God said to the angel, he said, you better go and protect that tree. Because I don't want this sinful, dying man to live forever. Mm. Now, God looks at that creation and says to himself, I'm going to make a third creation better than angels, better than Adam, and I'll call that creation the church. Mm. 
Now listen. Angels were created to serve him. Adam was created to love and fellowship with him. But Adam was never promised to become a co-heirs of God and a joint heir with Christ. Adam was never promised. Never once was he promised he'll judge angels. Adam was never once promised he'll sit in heavenly places with Christ. And God said to himself, I'll make a new creation. Not angels. Not a, a, a creation like Adam. But I'll make a creation with a heart that's my heart. Mm. I will not depend on their heart to love me. I'll give them a heart that will love me. Ezekiel 36. He says, I will put within them a heart that will obey my statute. I'll give them a mind that will know me. So God said to himself, this new creation I will not depend on. All I would do with that new creation is, I would take a heart that I know will love me and put it in them. A mind that will obey me, put it in them. And they will love me. And they will know me. And the Bible states in, in Ezekiel, that he'll take a stony heart out and put a fresh heart in. He'll put his laws in our minds and hearts. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. The Bible tells me that when God created that new creation, it was created, you hear me, in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2 states, he quickened us together, raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places. Do you know what really happened? I'll tell you if you just want to listen to this because this is glorious. God Almighty created that new creation. When Jesus Christ hung on the cross, you see this is what identification is all about. The greatest mystery of substitution I've ever, ever heard was from Paul the Apostle when he said, I live, Galatians 2.20, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me, and the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And I thought, my God, what is he talking about? And then I saw it. I saw it. When Jesus hung on the cross, God took you and hung you on that cross with his son. And you died. Mm. Then God laid you in the grave with his son. And then God created a new man in his son. And that new man was you. And lifted you up together with his son. And you rose from the dead with Jesus. Hallelujah. And took you to heaven with his son. And you sat together with Jesus. Now people of God. That's the mystery of identification. You see when Jesus hung on the cross. He saw you with him. When he went to the grave. He saw you with him. Paul said. I'm dead with Christ. I'm crucified with Christ. <laughs> Nevertheless, I live. But it's not me. It's Christ lives in me. But the life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What it means in a capsule is this. When Jesus died on that cross, he saw you on that cross with him. Before you were saved, he said he saw you. When, you went, when he went to the grave, you went to the grave with him. You died. When he rose, you rose with him. And now he is in heaven seated and you're with him. Now you see, God doesn't see you as you are. God sees you as he sees you. I'm sorry. God doesn't see you as you see yourself now. God sees you as you are in this book. The Bible states, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Do you realize in his eyes you're perfect? You know what? The blood of Jesus Christ forgives. Forgiveness deals with the past. He forgave our sin. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth. If we confess our sin, he is faithful just to forgive us and cleanse us today from all unrighteousness. But the blood of Jesus justifies. And I looked all three words up and it blew my mind away. The word forgiveness deals with my past. The words cleansing deals with my present, and the word justification deals with my future. <laughs> he forgave me from all sin, he's cleansing me from all sin, and I'm justified. Future tense. Now hear me. 
When I am born again, when I say, Jesus, come into my heart. In that instant. Are you all hearing this? Yes. In that instant, my spirit man is completely born again. God takes the old man out and puts a new man in. God does not, I repeat, God does not restore the old man. The old man is crucified. God does not renew the old man. He kills it. He puts a new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, Ephesians tells me. The Bible then says that this new man within me, every single day, groweth unto the stature of Christ. Paul said, let Christ be formed in you. When I, man, I feel this thing. Good. <laughs> when I'm born again, Jesus Christ gives me a brand new spirit. I am not an old spirit that's just been fixed up. <laughs> I am a brand new person that never existed before. Yes. A Amen. new creation right. that never existed yes. before. And the Bible says that new creation becomes one with him. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. At that moment, God looks at me and says, I see no sin in you. You are completely righteous. Amen. You are perfect. He hath perfected them forever that are sanctified. God looks at me and says, you are not a sinner. Your re you see, God doesn't see my body and my soul, brother. He sees the spirit. Are you hearing this? God looks at the real man inside and says, I see the real man complete in Christ. Now, or he means it or not, ye are complete in him. It means, brother, it's done. The work is finished. The, the spirit man is completely, completely, completely perfected. But what I see is my body. I say, oh my God, my, my body is failing and I am falling and it's sinning and messing up. But God says this. He says, you don't understand. I don't see what... You see on the outside of you, I see what you like already on the inside. Yes. The spirit man is complete. It is whole. It is perfect. It is sanctified. It is God's righteousness. That's what God sees. Then I say, well, Lord, how do I bring this inside perfection on the outside? God says, talk it out. Hallelujah. You see, what confession does, confession literally enlarges the inner man and the outer man begins to cooperate with what's inside. Confession gives my spirit domination over my soul and body. Okay, there's the key. There's the key. Exactly. There is the key is right. When I confess who I am in Christ, I'm confessing who my spirit is in Christ. Yes. When I confess who I am, and when I say I am, I'm not talking about this flesh fist face out here. I talk about the me inside that he has totally changed and put in there, brand new. When I confess the new man and who the, who the new man is, the physical body and the soul come under the dominion of the spirit. You see, Satan develops the human spirit in the wicked so their words can kill. Their bodies cooperate with their spirit. When I speak who I am in Christ, I speak literally, I speak the power of God out of my spirit. That he, you see, see here's, here's the, the thing, and this is an incredible revelation. God Almighty is in your spirit. God has done all he'll ever do about your physical healing. God has done all he'll ever do about your peace of mind, mm. your prosperity. It's all done. When your spirit that has it already, you see, please understand, my spirit is totally healed. It's a new spirit that has never known sickness. When I was born again, he placed in me a spirit that's completely healthy. Amen. It has never not once known sin, Amen. sickness, disease, True. misery, bondage, or hell. Amen. Never. True. That spirit of the new man in me is complete. Do you understand that? Yes, amen. Now, my soul, which is my emotion, is trying to catch up with what's inside of me. And my body 
is wondering what on, on earth is going on. When I confess who I am, my soul begins to come in line. My body begins to come in line. And I'll see the fruit of who I am on the inside, on my body outside, through confession. So, when I approach God's presence and say, I am your righteousness. My body says, oh no, you're not. You're a filthy, rotten sinner. That's what Paul had once as a problem. He said, oh wretched man that I am. Remember that? He said, on the, on the inside, I want to obey God, but the outside is fighting me. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body? And then he cried out, Jesus has done it. Yes. Glory. Amen. Glory. Now, people, this book tells me, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Start confessing who you are in Christ Jesus. Don't walk into God's presence saying, Lord, here I am again, sinning church member, crawling to make glory. Oh God. Rather, walk boldly before the throne and say, Father, I am your righteousness. I blew it today, but I know with confession, I'm forgiven. It's all over. Now, if you want to receive this wonderful Jesus in this new life, simply by asking him to come into your life, He'll totally transform you. Amen. He'll give you a new life. He'll put within you a new spirit. That bondage in your life, he'll release you from. That sin that has hung on you, he'll loose you from. That sickness that has crippled your body, he'll release you from. It all begins with the greatest miracle of all. And that is when you say, Jesus, come live your life in me. Take out this old life and kill it. And come and live inside of me. Come into my heart. Would you pray this prayer with me right now? He'll make you all he says you are. Why don't you bow your head right now and just pray this prayer with me. Just say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I need you. I need you. Forgive my sin. Forgive my sin. Right now. Right now. Become my life. Become my life. Take my life. Take my life. And give me your life. And give me your life. Set me free from devils. Set me free. Set me free from Satan. Set me free from Satan. I want to be born again. I want to be born again. And from this day on. And from this day on. I will confess. I will confess. Who you are. Who you are in my life. In my life. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. I'm going to pray for the sick yes. in just a second. Go ahead. Pray Before I do, you call those phones, that phone line there. You call and say, look, I just prayed with this fellow there on TV. I prayed with him. And Jesus has just touched my life. Will you do it now, please? Have them sing a song. Do it now. And pray. Go ahead, call him right now. Come again. Your soul in the soul he will respond to the cry in your heart. He will touch you and set you. say goodnight to the network and I think Benny ought to come right now those of you in this room that need the healing touch of Jesus we'll have special prayer in a moment but 
many of you are watching across America. Benny, let's have a final word of prayer just for them. Father, in Jesus' name, we rebuke sickness and disease in the name of the Lord. We command sickness to flee now in Jesus' name. Would you real quickly just stretch your hands towards mine right now? Many of you are going to be healed and delivered as you do this. Father, I rebuke that disease and sickness in the name of the Lord. Let the healing power of God flow through the people for your glory. Amen, amen, amen. Rise and be. Cassette of Praise the Lord, please write and ask for program 0228-89. That's 0228-89. The tapes will be sent for your love gift to the Praise the Lord program. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today, Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, write TBN, P.O. Box 23517, Vancouver AMF, Vancouver, British Columbia, V7B, 1W2. If you would like to contact guests or musicians for their tape books or albums, please write us at TBN and we'll forward your correspondence. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, call our partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord. This program was brought to you by the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout the United States of America.